During a life on the run after a string of crimes, he masqueraded as a religious painter for years and got away with it. Hey everyone, welcome to Painting in the Past, a series where I paint something and talk about the past. Now today I'm really excited because we're going to be talking about one of my favorite painters, Caravaggio. Caravaggio is an Italian Renaissance painter from the late 1500s to early 1600s. So there's really not much information about his early life, but we do know that his father was a steward and architect for the Marquis of Caravaggio, which is how he got his name. His real name's actually like Michelangelo. So this is actually really sad when Caravaggio was six years old, the bubonic plague kind of just took out his whole family. He was left an orphan and was homeless. So he like roamed the streets and by 11, he would relocate to Milan. By his late teens, probably around like 1588-ish. He was still poor, but he would move to Rome. This would also lead him to start producing and selling his own work, opposed to when he was an apprentice with someone else producing their work and having their name on it. And he would do this with a, an art dealer who would then go and sell his work. Obviously they get commissions, but it's his own work he's selling. So this worked in his favor because then his work caught the eye of a cardinal, Cardinal Francesco del Monte, which this actually really worked in his favor because he loved Caravaggio's work so much that he set him up in his own home with a pension, with his own room, like the whole nine. This is a fun little fact. Caravaggio was actually known to work really quickly, so he was known to complete a painting in just two weeks. Now, this seems like a really long time for today's standards, I feel like, but back then they didn't have like all the new tools we have that can speed up drying time. And they also worked on much, much bigger like surfaces to make murals instead of like a little eight by 10 canvas that takes you a couple hours. So this is actually really impressive. In 1597, Caravaggio earned a commission for the Contra Eli Chapel in Rome. And this was a really big commission because at the time he was 26 and he was tasked with creating three different paintings of St. Matthew. And these were all very large and individual paintings, so each painting was a different scene. And this resulted in his paintings, Matthew and the Angel, The Calling of St. Matthew, and The Martyrdom of St. Matthew. And all of these were finished around 1601 and really showcased the range of Caravaggio's skills as an artist. But these works kind of sparked a little controversy because they were unlike anything that was painted in a church before. Caravaggio's style is very dark and like, high contrast, very like dark and gruesome. Whereas traditional artwork that's in churches is very like light and airy and angelic like. So some people weren't really happy with these. But this commission really sparked Caravaggio's artistic abilities and took his next commissions in a whole new direction than they would have gone if he didn't do this. And this commission also provided him with lots of more opportunities and wealth that he would not have had otherwise. So this was very different from him growing up poor and homeless. A whole new world, really. Over the next few years, he would paint some of his most recognizable work. The Crucifixion of St. Peter the conversion of St. Paul, the deposition of Christ, and death of a virgin. Unfortunately, as his success as an artist grew, so did his personal turmoil. As you could imagine, he had quite a number of issues growing up without a family and on the streets. So this really kind of began to explode as he got older. Now it was said he was a very violent person because he would drink and gamble, which led to drastic mood swings. And as you can imagine, that's not pleasant to be around. So these issues would end up causing him lots of 
problems and he would actually serve prison time in 1603 after he assaulted someone. And this would cause a chain reaction of more events like this. In 1606, he would actually kill a well-known Roman pimp. So he ended up going on the run after that. It was never known really what the true root of this crime was. People believe maybe they had some like unsettled debt or other issues like that. Now, immediately after this murder, Caravaggio would go on the run, fleeing Rome. He would kind of seek asylum, if you will, in places like Naples, Malta, and Sicily, among several others. Oddly enough, though, because there was no internet, so who knew? If you didn't know his crimes, you wouldn't know. So fame followed Caravaggio because everyone heard of his artwork, but not his crimes. So even though he was fleeing to these different places, he was still receiving commissions and work. So in Naples, he painted the Madonna of the Rosary and the Seven Works of Mercy. And in Malta, he painted the Beheading of St. John the Baptist. In Messina, he painted the Resurrection of Lazarus and the Adoration of the Shepherds. And in Palermo, he painted Adoration of St. Francis and St. Lawrence. As you could imagine, being on the run for so long, Caravaggio turned into a nervous wreck, which didn't end well for him because this caused even more outbursts of violent activity, if you will. And this would cause another string of assaults and murder. So at this point, he's literally a serial killer. <laughs> like, honestly. And this is actually so annoying to me because I had absolutely no idea about how much of a violent person he was. I feel like I've never heard this side of him. I've always just heard about how great of an artist he was and how much of a influence he had on all artists to come. And he created this beautiful technique, but never about like his dark side. So it's kind of like gross to find out. In July of 1608, as you guessed it, another assault. He would attack Fra Giovanni, who was a senior knight in the Order of St. John in Malta. Now, this caused further problems for him because he assaulted this guy. And then a year later, this guy, I guess he stalked him or something, but he would attack Caravaggio and actually disfigure his face. And this would lead to Kind of permanent damage as then Caravaggio's sight and brush strokes got all messed up because he couldn't see obviously so he wasn't able to produce the same quality of work he was previously and this is kind of evident in his paintings like the denial of saint peter and the martyrdom of saint ursula now in hopes of getting a pardon from the pope because that was the only way to avoid basically jail time or death for all these assaults and murders, Caravaggio began to make his way back to Rome in 1610. And he was sailing from Naples at the time and the ship had stopped in Palo and he was arrested there. And now I'm a little confused how this even happened, but somehow he was released from the arrest. Not sure how, not sure if he escaped but he would continue his journey and end up stopping in Port Ercole, where he would die a few days later on July 18th, 1610. Now for many years, the exact cause of his death remained a mystery, but in 2010, some scientists who studied his remains found lead in his bones, and they believe he could have died from lead poisoning. This is actually really interesting to me because older oil paint was made with lead. So I'm wondering if he maybe had inhaled it when he was mixing up his paint. Because back then you would take like a raw pigment and oil and mix them together. So maybe he inhaled like so much of that. They believe that like that's kind of why he like went insane from the lead poisoning. 
But honestly, it's like such a shame. He was such a nasty person. Even if it's from lead poisoning, like that's still not an excuse, like all the terrible things he did. Because his art was so like game changing for the time. Like no other artist really painted in such a dark manner. And even to this day, Caravaggio is remembered as one of the greatest Renaissance painters of all time.